You're listening to Autumn on the Air, the weekly podcast that brings you conversations about the impact of research commercialization and the people who make it happen. Join us for interviews with patent and licensing professionals, innovators, entrepreneurs, and tech transfer leaders on the issues and trends that matter most. Keep listening for an inside track on the people, IP policies, and politics changing our world. Welcome to Autumn on the Air. Today, I'm excited to be speaking with Dick Paul, the chair of the Federal Lab Consortium's National Advisory Council, which plays a vital role in supporting the transfer of cutting-edge technologies to the commercial marketplace. Major General Richard Paul is a distinguished Air Force veteran with an impressive background in science and technology. He retired in 2000 from the U.S. Air Force as Major General after serving 33 years and in 2007 from the Boeing Company after seven years as a vice president. He has worked in three Air Force laboratories and was the first commander of the Air Force Research Laboratory. He has also served on the National Scientific Foundation's Small Business Innovation Research Advisory Committee and the Innovation Research Interchange Board of Directors. In this episode, we'll explore the importance of collaboration and community building in technology transfer. Welcome, Dick. I'm so excited to have you on the air. Thank you so much. I appreciate your asking me, and I'm looking forward to our session. Yes, I am as well. And before we get into the podcast, I just wanted to say I, I noticed that you've had a very long and distinguished career in the Air Force as a major general. So I want to thank you very much for your service to our country. Thank you so much. Well, let's talk a little bit about the FLC. You're the chair of the FLC's National Advisory Council, or NAC as it's referred to. Can you tell us a little bit about what NAC is and how it supports technology transfer? Sure. Uh, why don't I start with the FLC? Uh, the, the FLC is a federal laboratory consortium for technology transfer, and it is really the equivalent of autumn for the federal labs. So it's a consortium of the tech transfer professionals from over 300 federal labs across the full spectrum of agencies, DOD, NASA, Commerce, Energy, so forth and so on. Uh, FLC is governed by an executive board, very much like Autumn is. And so the mission of the NAC is to provide advice to the executive board on whatever they would like, but particularly with a focus from an external stakeholder perspective. So our NAC is composed of eight people right now from a whole spectrum of backgrounds in the external ecosphere, I would say, for tech transfer. So how long do NAC board members serve for? Is it a couple-year term? Is it a single-year term? No, it's typically longer than that. Uh, there is a term of three years, and at the end of that term, uh, the invitation is extended to stay, or many of the NAC members are very busy. They're industry and, and other affiliations and can't afford more time. So it's typically three years with the opportunity to extend. Interesting. And you're extremely generous with your time and your efforts in supporting the FLC. Can you tell me a little bit of what it is about technology transfer that interests you? Sure. I should probably say uh, I'll answer this from a federal tech transfer perspective, which is a little different, I think, than a university tech transfer perspective. In the federal labs, and particularly the lab I was associated with, the Air Force Research Lab, our mission is to develop technology to support the warfighter. So we have a very specific mission. We develop technologies that the warfighter needs, and then we transition those technologies out of the lab. And I use the word transition very deliberately to differentiate from transfer. But as you can well imagine, many of the technologies we develop for military purposes also have spinoffs for commercial purposes. So the tech transfer mission is to take those technologies funded by the taxpayer and look for an opportunity to move them out of the lab to a non-DOD application. And I just think that is a very noble mission. Uh, we're there to do the mission to support the warfighter. But if we can take the taxpayer's money and take some of those technologies and move them into the commercialization mainstream 
and bolster the economy and help create jobs and contribute to the social environment, then that is a mission as well, but it's a really feel-good mission. So I kind of characterize it as it's doing the right thing with the taxpayer's money. And so I'm excited about having the opportunity to do that. That's really amazing. And it sounds like you're a perfect person to be involved in that. And You know, looking back at your career, it's absolutely fascinating. It's extremely diverse. You've had experience in the military, like I mentioned. You've been in the private sector and also involved with associations. So I'd love to hear your perspective on the role that organizations like the FLC and Autumn play in technology transfer and commercialization. Sure. So FLC is first and foremost a support organization. Our customers are the tech transfer offices of the federal laboratory community, over 300 labs are members, and we are there to support them. So I kind of characterize our mission as supporting the whole spectrum of federal labs across multiple agencies, which we can do much more efficiently than each lab trying to stand on its own. So, for example, uh, education is one of the things we do, just like Autumn does. We can put together technology transfer training and courses that the smaller tech transfer offices can't afford to do, and we can do that more efficiently and then distribute that training out either online or in person. We can also really facilitate connections between the individual labs and the external community sometimes more effectively, especially for smaller labs who have resource limitations. So we try to help the tech transfer offices of the federal labs operate more effectively and more efficiently. And in a nutshell, that's our mission. So both FLC and Autumn support the transfer of cutting edge technologies to the commercial marketplace, but there's always challenges that are associated with this process. Can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you've seen? Yeah, I think to me, the biggest challenge is awareness of the federal laboratories and the fact that we have a tech transfer mission, particularly with industry. Um, Industry often doesn't know the federal labs exist Or if they do, they don't know how to access them. It's this bureaucracy, and they have no idea how to penetrate the walls. So to me, one of our biggest challenges is education of the stakeholder community and industry in particular that there's this national treasure called Federal Labs with a wealth of expertise and technology and cutting-edge facilities, and that is there for you to use It's part of our mission by statute. It's getting that word out. Yeah, it sounds like it because it sounds like there's tremendous opportunities for collaboration um, to help build a strong tech transfer ecosystem with industry. So what's your thoughts on the role that the private sector plays in this process and how they can contribute to the commercialization of new technologies? So of all the external stakeholders, to me, The private sector industry sits at the very top of the pyramid. They are the entity that commercializes technology. Federal labs don't produce products. Universities don't produce products. State and local governments don't produce products. It's industry. So I view industry as the key stakeholder that the federal labs have to to transfer technology. Without industry, there would not be technology transfer because it's about commercialization of technologies. And again, I think our biggest challenge is letting industry know that the federal labs exist and they're accessible and that FLC, just like Autumn can facilitate communications to the university community, FLC can help do that job between industry on the one hand and the federal labs on the other. So what do you think is the best way to do that, to build a stronger community, to facilitate collaboration between industry and FLC? I really think it boils down to communications. That is the biggest challenge, two-way communications. Uh, As I said before, it's getting the word out, but how do you do that? It's easier said than done. And that's one of the things FLC 
has worked hard on figuring out what's the most efficient way to communicate with industry. And one thing we have found is that there are consortia of industry, just like there is a federal lab consortium and a university tech transfer consortium. So if we can find those consortia of industries, for instance, we work with one uh, called the Water Council, which is a consortium of water companies. And you would say, well, what, what does the federal labs have to do with with water. Some of them have that as a mission, but even in our DOD labs, we work on technologies like sensing technologies or autonomous technologies that the water industry can use. If we can communicate with that consortium, they in turn have hundreds of members. And so that's what we're looking to do. How do we connect the dots in the most efficient way possible to get the word out? So drawing on your experience in tech transfer, what advice would you give to tech transfer professionals who are looking to commercialize their technology and bring it to market? Well, again, let me speak from a federal technology transfer perspective. What I have found is our technologists are very, very good on the technical side, not quite as good on the business side. And to transfer technology, there has to be a business perspective brought into this. And I'm an engineer, so I understand this mindset that if you have a technology, you think it's the next best thing to slice bread and it will sell itself. But as we know, it won't. You have to find a market. You have to find a need. And you have to be able to communicate in layman's terms. Here's what my technology is. Here's how it can help you. And you have to do it very efficiently. So I think for our technology transfer professionals in the federal labs, helping the engineers bridge that business gap and learn how to package their message and communicate their technology in understandable terms is one of the greatest things we could do, one of the most beneficial things that a T2 professional could do. So what do you think are some of the common pitfalls they should be aware of and also what they could do to increase their chances of success? Well, I I think one is developing the skill set to talk in terms of a business case. It's kind of the classic pitch session and universities do that very well, but the federal laboratories don't as much because we don't work on startups or spin outs to the degree I think universities do. So it doesn't come natural to our engineers. Uh, So I think working with them on doing that is very important. I think another thing we need to do is help connect engineers with engineers. Tech transfer professionals talk to each other. But what I have found in industry is it's the engineer who has a need he's trying to solve or she's trying to solve, they want to talk to another engineer so they can get down into techno geek and get into that (laughs) level. Get into the weeds. Exactly. So trying to connect engineer with engineer, technician with technician, uh, I think is something that will greatly facilitate collaboration and actually actualization of tech transfer. So for any potential partners looking to bring their technology to market, what advice would you give them? Well, for the external community, I would say utilize an organization like FLC. You don't have to understand how the bureaucracy works. We do. And if they will come to FLC, just as other stakeholders may come to Autumn to say, how do I work with the universities, then we can do that work for them. We can get them in the front door and we can help guide them to the right laboratory or the right person who has a potential solution to their problem. So um, I think that's part of it. Once once you work with an external stakeholder, the, the next thing to do is really establish a relationship. Nothing happens without trust and relationships don't happen with one meeting So it's really important to realize the importance of establishing a relationship, building trust, and that takes time to do, and you need to be patient in doing it. So that's kind of my perspective on that. So, Dick, what do you think are some of the important factors to consider when evaluating a new technology? 
Well, again, from a, a tech transfer perspective, uh, and again, from a federal government perspective, where we usually work to satisfy the mission of a customer, I think we need an awareness of the market as well. And we need to keep up from a tech transfer perspective on what are the driving needs of the ecosystem and what can we bring to the table. Sometimes that's very straightforward. Uh, sometimes it's not. I, I have often been surprised at the degree of serendipity in tech transfer, where a technology you might think has no chance of meeting somebody's need actually will. You don't know that until you get the two people talking to one another. And then it's amazing how often we're surprised at ourselves that I would have never dreamed this technology could have helped meet this need. Yeah, sometimes it's amazing. And the ones you think are surefire, you know, going to be a success end up really floundering or maybe not making it at all. So exactly. sometimes it's fascinating how that all works out. So Dick, I wanted to ask you, looking towards the future, what developments or trends do you see in the field of tech transfer? And how do you think those are going to impact commercialization of new technologies? I kind of think the trends I see for tech transfer are really the trends we see for even a broader spectrum. The first one to me clearly is post-COVID. We are operating in a totally different environment of interaction, of people working from home, of more virtual meetings, of learning how to do hybrid meetings where we have both in-person and virtual participants. And we, we will never go back to the old days. So we need to keep learning how to do that better. I think everybody is learning that, but that's going to be particularly important, I think, in tech transfer, which people call a contact sport. It's a, uh, and it is, you, but we aren't going to contact as much physically and, and more virtually. Um, I think another trend, uh, again, affecting everybody is artificial intelligence. Brand new, scary to an extent, but very powerful. So uh, how, do we, how do we harness and understand AI and use AI tools to further the tech transfer mission? And uh, Kathy Vidal talked a little bit about that yesterday, uh, about how to use those tools. And everyone's learning that, but that's a, a clear trend. I think another one, um, which some people may think is surprising, is the whole emphasis on diversity and equity and inclusion, reaching out to underserved communities, getting more diversity in our tech transfer offices will have a powerful effect. And we're just really on the cusp, I think, of leveraging what we know is a powerful capability. So I, even though everyone is working DEIA or whatever acronym you might use, I think it's a powerful trend and one that hopefully we can all leverage and it will be better for everybody. Absolutely. It's so important because study after study has shown that, you know, teams that are diverse are more successful. They're more creative. They have a greater economic impact. So I couldn't agree with you more on that. And and that's something Autumn works very hard on. And I'm sure the FLC is working very hard on that as well. Yeah, FLC just has a new policy, uh, and we're trying to figure out how do we implement it most effectively. Diversity is is more than just uh, race and ethnicity and gender. Uh, I think putting more focus on small businesses is something we, we tend to work with the larger companies. It's easier. They have resources. The smaller companies don't. So it's almost harder to reach out to them because they don't have the, the resource base to reach back to us. But we need to do that. And that's where innovation comes from, as you know. It's from the startups, the small companies. That's the engine of innovation. So we're trying to figure out how can we better serve small businesses. Well, Dick, I can't thank you enough for all your time and insights today and helping us learn more about the FLC. Um, it's been really great having you on the air. Thank you. I I've really enjoyed being here. And I would just end by saying how much synergy I believe there is between FLC and Autumn. Our, our missions are very similar. Uh, a lot of what we do is similar. Uh, some of it is different, and we need to understand that. But overall, there's tremendous synergy. So 
uh, I'm delighted we have a partnership with Autumn, and I hope that continues for a long time. Yes, I do as well, because I think uh, together we can achieve so much more than we can separately. Absolutely. This has been interesting learning about the critical role of collaboration in bringing new innovations to market and how important it is to have strong partnerships across the tech transfer ecosystem. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on Autumn on the Air. Thanks for listening to Autumn on the Air with Lisa Mueller. Get social with us and share your thoughts. You can tweet us at AUTM or visit us online at AUTM.net. We'll be back next week on the air. Be sure to join us. New to Tech Transfer or a seasoned pro? Autumn is the global member organization for Tech Transfer and is here to help you get connected, get smart, and get ahead. Whether you work in academia, research, government, business development, corporate engagement, or startups, Autumn is dedicated to supporting you through education, advocacy, networking, and promotion. Join and you'll receive 20 free live webinars, as well as meaningful discounts on meetings and courses, insider access to a vast network of colleagues to help you through challenges, and a line on new technologies and the university decision makers who license them. Membership is open for 2023. Join us.